face of your new police stays. My seatmate uh, at the other end of the table talks about why this hasn't been done before. But we did this with nullification in 2011, and I headed that up. This bill specifically addresses protecting officers and uh, individuals acting on behalf of the state from federal prosecution if a law is contrary to that which we've passed here in Idaho. That is, in and of itself, nullification. It's important that we begin to flex our sovereignty. We all know that, both in terms of the finance situation, in terms of the Fed, and the rest of the things that are doing there, and certainly the Supreme Court, decisions that force, basically, legislate for us. It's almost to the point sometimes where I really believe the only thing we're there for is to rubber stamp whatever the executive branch insists that we do. If it's the judges, it's even worse. We don't have to uh, rubber stamp it. It just becomes law. So this fight will continue. This particular bill is right in the face. And my job has been, I have been tasked as a member of state affairs to address the language so that it doesn't appear that we're giving the finger to the feds. <laughs> but Representative Green's point, we all agree on, and those of you that have been electing us all these years, recognize pro-life is the centerpiece of our position here. And why is that? Because death is the centerpiece of the other party. Because the choice that anyone has is before they have relations that would end up in pregnancy. Once you make the choice to have that relation, then you are responsible for the outcome. I, I too believe that abortion is murder. Uh, Representative Mendive was kind enough to share the bill. It's the first time I've seen it. I got about about halfway through it uh, as I scanned it here waiting for my turn to answer the question. Uh, the Until we change the culture of death that's accepted in this country, we cannot, we cannot restore the soul of our country. I say that you know, America was, was damaged at the beginning because we preserved slavery. And, and it took a civil war to end the sin of slavery. And then it took nearly a hundred years uh, for us to treat those of African American descent uh, in, in, a, in a, not, not everybody, but as a country, to treat them appropriately. This is not, you have to change people's hearts. It's not something that will be changed by one law. But you have to change the law, I think, to make progress in, in some cases in order to change the hearts. And so I think it's important that we, we move in the direction not only of establishing in code that abortion is murder, but also establishing that as a state, we still have sovereignty to do what we think is best as established under the Constitution of the United States. And I agree with everything that's been said to this point. Um, I don't quote actually defines murder 18-4001, and it basically it includes uh, a fetus or an embryo. Um, there's a con then you have a contradiction because later on we do carve out an exception and allow doctors to perform an abortion, which does kill and by our definition. By Idaho, code, by Idaho code definition, um, 
we, which does determine that uh, uh, the, the taking of a life of a fetus or an embryo is murder in this state, then we carve out an exception and say that doctors can do it. So this needs to be looked at because we, there's a conversation that needs to be had here. And so that, once again, I support this. I think, I think it's high time we had this discussion. And so here we go. Looking around the room, I know I've spoken to uh, a lot of you people, either individually or as members of uh, Idaho Republican uh, Pachyderm Clubs, and uh, I've passed out my rack cards to a thousand people personally, and the very first item on that rack card is that I will defend life, so I'm a very strong pro-life supporter supported by Idaho Chooses Life. Um, a year ago, just about a year ago today, I had a granddaughter born the day after the anniversary of Roe versus Wade, and it really made me think of the contrast between the ability of having a beautiful granddaughter born that day, the day after the remembrance of the anniversary of the 1973 the Supreme Court opinion, not decision, yeah. Yeah, that's our opinion. Yeah. That's our because the Supreme Court rules on something that's a legal opinion and in some cases it's not binding. Um, along those lines, I am 100% pro-choice. Okay, that may come as a shock to some of you. I would like to give the fetus a choice to be born. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Um, I agree with the sentiments that we've had down the line. I have not also seen a copy of the bill, but I think it's a, I did talk when I saw the headline, I did talk to John on the chamber floor and I thought, you know, this is addressing <coughs> pro-life, this is addressing murder, and it addresses states' rights. And I think those are three things that we take in, in combination in one bill. I'm kind of surprised it hasn't been brought up this way before also. So um, as a pro-life individual, I think, um, this is going to be a very, very interesting vote. So, thanks for the question. I haven't seen Representative Green's bill. I did see him on TV, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about it. Uh, this is such a difficult issue. Having a, a 16-month-old baby. Anytime I look at him, it, it's not a choice. You know, I, I mean that is. That is a wonderful life, and, and I can't imagine extinguishing that for any uh, person. And, and I was actually just talking to my wife on the phone a couple days ago, and I haven't actually seen the legislation, but I think there was a bill passed in New York that would allow abortions full term. And it just absolutely killed me. So, um, you know, certainly supportive of, of pro-life issues, but, but I haven't seen the bill, so we'll... we'll uh, hold, withhold judgment until uh, that moves through the through the process. I just wanted to kind of wrap up on some of the comments. Um, uh, first of all, and I, I apologize, I didn't mean to insinuate that any of our pro-life legislators have not been working hard on this issue, uh, because I know, um, especially my seatmate, Representative Vito, I know he's been an advocate for, for unborn babies for a long time. He supports those causes. We're 100 percent in agreement on that. One of the points that he brings out is a reality of the legislative process. I, I'm not known as the guy who polishes the edges and you know, tries to be sensible to what might or might not offend somebody. My, my position is, I'm just gonna tell you what I think and you take it the way you take it. Uh, Representative Vito is a good seatmate because he's helping me to learn how to polish those edges <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. It's, fu it's funny for two lawyers to have that uh, interaction, but that's the way it is. Um, and right. And so, uh, what I keep telling people, uh, my over the overwhelming response to this um, legislation, not just from my constituents, but from across Idaho, and now even nationally, is overwhelming support. Uh, what's consistent with the people that are against this proposal is it's an emotional thing for them, without any regard to science or the life of the baby. It's about hate. I, I, it's, it's about um, getting their way. It's about hating God. Uh, and because of that, I and actually all of the pro-life representatives in the House and the senators are going to be subject to that hate. And uh, I don't 
I'm up for the I'm up for that challenge. Uh, my response to these people is to try to be measured and point out this is about sovereignty. This is not about a Supreme Court decision, and this is about protecting Idahoans. And I'll maintain that course. And uh, I, if anybody is interested, I'm happy to share some of the rather humorous names I've been called. I, I was a yesterday I was a worthless meat sack, and then I was I was a dumb donkey, but he didn't use the word donkey. So anyway, uh, it doesn't bother me. So thank you. I just want to make an additional comment on this topic because I think it's really important. Those of us who support pro-life may differ in whether the wording in this bill is where we want this to be right now. And so I want to go on record as saying, I'm very pro-life, and I will support any legislation that moves us forward in that, but I do not want to see young mothers be put in jail. That is just not the answer to this. Okay, <clears throat> sorry, I have to comment on that, and uh, um, I'm, I can't say I really have a disagreement with uh, Senator Sousa on this, but Putting mothers in jail is not the issue here. The issue here is what is murder in Idaho? And if we have a murder statute, we need to enforce it. Now, uh, that's a common complaint that I hear. Well, you're saying you want to put mothers uh, in jail for murder if they abort their baby. We have a due process for criminal uh, matters. And that due process includes law enforcement and a county prosecutor and investigation and then uh, a decision whether to prosecute. And that's an important process. And at part and parcel of that process is the ability for a prosecutor at their own discretion to say there are mitigating circumstances that would tend to say maybe punishment should be altered in this particular case uh, and, um, and they can act on that, maybe ask for lesser punishment. Uh, but we cannot take into consideration that because we might end up putting some guilty party who's committed a crime in prison just because they're a mother. Uh, to me, there is no person with a greater duty and ability to protect the life of an unborn child than the mother. Here, here.